Hello, and welcome to this episode of A Glance Into Our World. For those of you that are new to our channel, my name is George, and my wife and I, Giselle, uh, we purchased a Lagoon 42 catamaran back in August of 2021, and we've been sailing her since then. In this episode, I'm going to delve into some more technical aspects of our sailing journey. Uh, this is hopefully part of a Pay It Forward series as uh, I try and put together some videos that will share what I hope is helpful information for others uh, that uh, they can learn from our experiences, just as we have learned from the experiences of others that have put information out on the internet. Okay, so we, before we go much further, this is turning out to be a longer video than I had anticipated, so I will have chapter marks uh, in the video so that you could just jump around to the, the section that you're most interested in. Uh, the other thing is that uh, we're talking about the Thornless Path and uh, if you're interested in doing the I-65, I'll put some links to some other uh, sailors, uh, couples, sailing couples that have gone the I-65 so that you can get their impressions of, of using that strategy. So for our first sailing season, we sailed from Gibraltar uh, across the Atlantic over to St. Lucia in the Caribbean Islands. Uh, we then sailed uh, north through the Windward and Leeward Islands uh, to the Virgin Islands and eventually towards the end of our first sailing season we sailed from the Virgin Islands uh, through the Bahamas over to the east coast of the United States. Uh, for that whole first season the majority of the time we were sailing with the wind, the waves, and the current, uh, helping us along uh, as we sail towards our destinations, which is, uh, it can be very nice and, and comfortable sailing for, for the most part. Uh, the second season would be different as we were sailing from the east coast of the United States back down to the Caribbean as we sailed uh, our way down to Grenada where we were scheduled to haul our boat out to have some bottom maintenance done. Now, when you're sailing uh, from the east coast of the United States down to the Caribbean, basically you're sailing against the wind, the waves, and the current, and this can be rather uncomfortable, hence the name, the Thorny Path. So uh, in this video, I hope to share some useful details uh, of that journey and as far as our experience goes. And by no means are we experts. Uh, this is only our second season sailing, and so we're learning our way, learning the ropes, literally. Uh, but I hope that uh, as I share our experiences, you can learn a little bit from what we did, uh, right or wrong, and uh, hopefully that helps you out. So essentially, as you're sailing from the east coast of the United States down to the Caribbean islands, uh, you're sailing against the wind, the waves, and the current. That's why it's called the Thorny Path can be rather uncomfortable to, to go in that direction. And throughout the years, uh, sailors have developed different strategies for uh, doing that. Now the default strategy, which I call the Lieutenant Dan strategy, is that you sail pretty much uh, straight into it uh, with no regard and you just grit your teeth and hope for the best uh, and, and you get to your destination with uh, your boat still floating and your nerves intact. That's not a lot of fun, and it can be rather uncomfortable, uh, more so for the casual sailors like my wife and I. The second option for, or strategy for sailing uh, from the US down through the Caribbean is uh, called the I-65 method. And in this method, you basically wait for a good weather window to sail uh, basically east from the United States out to west longitude 65 and then you turn southward along that longitude towards your intended destination down in the Caribbean. Typically this ends up being either Puerto Rico or the Virgin Islands. Uh, some even go all the way to St. Martin or Antigua. So in this method it refers to I-65 as being an interstate because it is rather quick. You get down to your intended destination in about a week or two uh, and, and that can be great for your plans. The third uh, option or strategy for sailing uh, from the U.S. to the Caribbean Islands is named the Thornless Path. And in this strategy, 
It involves basically making lots of hops or stops as you sail down the east coast of the U.S., through the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, Dominican Republic, eventually getting to and through uh, Puerto Rico. Uh, this strategy involves a lot more patience, uh, willingness to do overnight sales and early morning sales, and you have a higher probability of having to motor sail. So my wife and I decided to use the uh, thornless path strategy for two main reasons. The first of which is that uh, since this was only our second season of sailing, we definitely felt more comfortable sailing shorter passages uh, as opposed to longer passages, like what would be required on the I-65. Uh, the second main reason is that um, we definitely wanted to enjoy the Bahamas as we sailed back down. Uh, during our first season, we uh, spent just a few days sailing through the Bahamas as we made our way uh, up to the east coast of the United States and and now we really wanted to take our time and enjoy uh, the beautiful clear waters of the Bahamas at a more leisurely pace. So you know why we chose the thornless path? How did we actually go about sailing the thornless path? We uh, read or I read the book I was gonna say <laughs> by Bruce Van Sant uh, on the thornless path we interpreted all that information in there. I did as best as I could. And we also sought advice or feedback from other people on how they interpret it. And uh, for example, what makes a good weather window? What defines a good weather window as you're leaving Georgetown in the Bahamas and heading down towards Turks and Caicos or the Dominican Republic? So let me give you some overall statistics to kind of give you an idea. We sailed from Brunswick, Georgia. We left December 1st, 2022, and we sailed all the way down to Grenada, and we arrived in Grenada on May 2nd of 2023. So that's almost half a year, uh, as opposed to taking the I-65, which would have, you know, we could have cut a lot of time out of that if we wanted to. We made 46 stops. Uh, yeah, I need to take a look at my notes. We made uh, four stops in Florida and basically spent 11 days as we were going down the east coast of Florida on the outside. We have a Lagoon 42 and the mast is 68 feet, so we cannot use the intercoastal waterway. So that was a limitation there. And there are not too many choices along the east coast of Florida where we could uh, anchor. So. You know, we, we made four hops to, to get to West Palm Beach, and then from there we went across to the Bahamas. We went from West Palm Beach, we sailed a little bit further south, and then we headed east across to West End in the Bahamas. In the Bahamas, we spent almost two months, 56 days altogether. We made 20 stops uh, down through the Abacos, Eleuthera, and then the Exumas. After we left the Bahamas, so uh, those 20 hops included uh, going down to Mayaguana. Once we left Mayaguana, we basically were into the Turks and Caicos and we spent uh, just over about a week in the Turks and Caicos. And we made uh, three hops there. We stopped at Provinciales, Six Hills, and then Big Sand Key. From there, we sailed overnight uh, to get to the Dominican Republic. And in the Dominican Republic, we only had two hops. We had planned on making a few more hops along the north coast, but uh, that just turned into one long overnight mm -hmm. sail, which was just under 24 hours, and we made it straight from Ocean World Marina down to Puerto Bahia Marina. And we were able to take advantage of the marina amenities there and relax. So that was really nice. Yeah. In once we left uh, the Dominican Republic, we made it to Puerto, Puerto Rico. Again, another overnight sail. Uh, it was a pleasant sail. Uh, the dreaded Mona Passage was very, very nice sail for us overnight. And in Puerto Rico, we spent um, over a month. We spent 
uh, 44 days and we made uh, nine, nine different stops in, uh, on the, basically we, where we landed was Puerto Real. And then we went to the southern coast and we made a total of nine hops, including mm. uh, the last hop, which was in Vieques before we went over to St. Thomas. And then after uh, St. Thomas, once we got to St. Thomas, I basically lumped all those together because it happened uh, rather quickly, comparatively. And we made eight hops from the time we uh, got to St. Thomas and made it all the way down to Grenada. And that was 22 days. 22 days, yeah. So basically, that's, uh, those are a, a, an overview, a summary of how we did the Thornless Path. The other technical aspect of the Thornless Path is what makes a good weather window. And that changes based on where you are along the way. For example, when we were in Florida waiting to cross to uh, West End in the Bahamas, a good weather window meant crossing the Gulf Stream with no uh, wind that was coming from the south or southwest uh, so that we wouldn't be uh, going across in some unsettled seas. We ended up waiting for a good weather window. We were using Chris Parker's uh, Marine Weather Service they, and they gave us a, a, a go ahead and that was an easy sail. They're always on spot. Yeah, yeah, they, they um, were on point. Yeah, on point. And basically it was, yes, we had to motor sail a little bit. Uh, one of the things that we had to consider is uh, going across the Gulf Stream, you have to uh, turn a little bit further south in order to not end up too far north and that changed our wind angle a little bit. But aside from that, the, 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 the seas were just pleasant to sail in. Mm -hmm. the, the biggest problem was uh, Giselle had to had overnight watch and she had to make sure that none of the big uh, cruise ships or uh, cargo ships ran into us. A good weather window down in the Bahamas was totally different and it was easy to pick our way, uh, pick and choose our weather uh, going down. The, the only challenge there was avoiding cold fronts uh, where the wind would shift around and, and you know, making sure that we we're at a good anchorage. Mm -hmm. Going south from Georgetown, a good weather window looked different. Uh, there we were waiting for a cold front uh, to come through and basically minimize the, the trade winds while at the same time making sure that the seas were not too rough. So we had to wait for the cold front to come and, to and then, yeah, and, and change the wind around, but then wait a little bit in order for the seas to calm down. After the cold front's come. Right, and then try and stretch out that good window of opportunity as far as we could. So we did that when we left Georgetown, we went to Calabash Bay, and then from Calabash Bay, we made a big jump uh, across, we went near Rum Key and sailed all the way down to Mayaguana uh, overnight. So that's what a, a good weather window was always, seas less than two meters, so basically five to six feet uh, or less, and the winds somewhere between 15 to 20 knots. Uh, when we made it to the Dominican Republic, the challenge there was uh, the marina, you basically, if you're in a marina, you need to leave during daylight hours, I'll, I'll say that, is basically while the marina and the navy is there. They're usually there from 7 a.m. till 6 p.m., for example, and then the marina closes down and you can't leave uh, overnight. So, and that actually is the best time to sail when the weather is settled, is the best time to sail across the, the, the northern coast yeah. of Dominican Republic. So, and that's in essence why we ended up sailing in, you know, we didn't make more hops along the north coast of the Dominican Republic. But those, the weather windows there definitely looked like seas less than two meters and the winds less than 20 knots and wait a day. Uh, and that ended up working out for us. So that's what a good weather window looked like there. Then in, once we got to Puerto Rico, the good weather windows were basically early morning sailing, you know, get up if, if the weather looked like it was gonna be less than 20 knots and the seas less than two meters. We basically woke up early in the morning 
and sailed a few hours uh, before the trade winds started kicking back up again. Mm -hmm. And we were able, that's why we made nine hops along the southern coast of Puerto Rico. It was easy. We would just get up early, sail a few hours, and then anchor and relax for the rest of the day. That was easy. Yeah. And then the same thing goes for the Virgin Islands. Uh, we could do the same thing. Um, so basically, the, that's how we we did uh, the Thornless Path, and that's what it kind of looked like for us. So now that you've heard a little bit of the technical information of how we did it, what about how we personally feel about sailing the Thornless Path? Um, so for example, uh, were there any terrible experiences that, that you had that you would make you second guess doing it again? No, no. Uh, I would definitely do it again. I think uh, sailing-wise, everything was doable. It was, I, I wasn't scared. I wasn't freaked out. I wasn't um, concerned or or anything like that. Uh, it was just time-wise, trying to. Uh, we do this saying, oh. We'll just take it easy. We won't have scheduled time. There will be, you know, we'll just do it at our own pace. But it does. It turns out oh, there's always a schedule. If it's not trying to be at a certain place by a certain time, it's the schedule of waiting for the window opportunity to sail. So. It's okay. So, <laughs> life. <laughs> Life happens. Life happens. <laughs> we come out here to a park to get some quiet and life happens. Doesn't happen. Yeah, yeah it's a park for everybody, not just us. Um, but um, so I think that that was that's the main thing uh, is trying to coordinate um, schedules to either meet people or be somewhere by a certain time because of the weather that is guesstimated to happen or whatever. So it's not just one thing or another, but some kind of planning does have to happen in order for things to go a little bit smoother. But like I said, life, you know, just, it's hard to. It doesn't always happen the it, way you expect it to. Yeah. Uh, another thing that we kind of experienced along the way at, and gained more experience as we went throughout the thornless path was our confidence in uh, how many nights uh, or days of passage we could do on our own comfortably together, uh, just the two of us. So at the beginning of it, we started with just overnight sales, like one overnight, and then towards the end, uh, we did uh, like uh, multiple day, uh, two day and two overnights. And so I, I think I felt comfortable with that. How about you? I did too. Um, I know we haven't done a week's worth on our own, I don't think. Not on our own, no. Not our no. own. Um, but um, I think we, we could do fine. Uh, I don't think we'll have any issues. Right. Sleep. Deprivation. One of us needs more sleep than the other one. Um, I won't say who, uh, but uh, and nighttime is best for um, one of us. For me, my nighttime. That's my uptime. So that's that's good for me. I, it, it doesn't bother me to up to be up at uh, longer hours at night. Um, and he's a morning person, so mornings are good for him. So it, it works out great. <laughs> yeah. Flexibility. We need to learn to be flexible. And so uh, hard and fast schedules wasn't necessarily the best thing. Let we... me correct that. He needs to be more flexible. Yeah. I am as flexible as can be, but he's a type A personality. So he needs to, you know, uh, he's working on that and he's done I'm, amazing. I'm flexing he... that. I'm flexing my flexibility. <laughs> He's and he's really doing great. He's really come a long way, which is great. Well, since we're comparing the different strategies, uh, we we haven't done the I-65, and but now that we've done the Thornless Path and we 
saw how long that can take. Um, knowing that if we go on the I-65 strategy, it would take about a week and a half, maybe, maybe a week, a week and a half to two weeks. Does that sound more appealing to you than uh, making all the short hops along the Thornless Path? So in the short, the, sh the short hops would include? Yeah, the Bahamas, Turks and Caicos, Dominican Republic, Puerto Rico, as opposed to going straight from, let's say, the United States somewhere down to the Virgin Islands or... Oh, okay. Yeah. Um, Hmm. Some places, oh, sorry. Some places I I wouldn't mind going back to is just um, because there were some things that we didn't get to do mm -hmm. that I would want to do that I that I would enjoy doing again and some things that I would enjoy doing again like Puerto Rico the food it was amazing <laughs> I mean so I keep going back to the the food yeah. and the and the people were amazing but. Uh, some places it's like, okay, I saw it, I enjoyed it, like in that I know this is not going to be... Um, oh, it's a personal preference it's a, really, Okay, I was going to say, just, yeah, I was going to say, okay, this is yeah. not going to be a popular opinion, but we did the Bahamas. And you're fine? I'm fine. Right. Okay. Um, it was great. I loved it. I enjoyed it. The water's gorgeous. And but that's that's good. You're good. You could bypass the Bahamas. I could bypass the, yeah. the Bahamas, but I I really enjoyed the Dominican Republic um, and Puerto Rico. So, so I don't know if. So in essence, you would you wouldn't mind doing a longer shot from I, the the U.S. straight down to the Dominican or Puerto Rico. Oh, no, I wouldn't. Okay, so that's that's kind of like the I-65. Okay, but you see. You didn't include. <laughs> you didn't include that. You said bypass. I, the sixty-five uh, bypasses yeah. the Bahamas, it can, it can. the Turks and Caicos, right. it depends Dominican on Dominican, where you go from, and Puerto yeah. Rico. So I just took it as a whole. Yeah, I'm saying yeah, you, yeah. you said to so. Yeah. Sorry. Yeah. No. Sixty-five to. Straight down to. Straight down Dominican to Dominican. Or, or, Absolutely yes. Heartbeat. Okay. I do that. All right, so let's wrap it up. All right, so hopefully uh, you found this information helpful. If you did, please at least hit the like button. If you uh, feel so inclined, please uh, leave some comments on whether you found it useful or not, and if we can, how we can make it any better. Uh, or let us know what kind of information you'd like to know more about or if something piqued your interest, let us know about that too. Thanks for watching.